All right, well, we're back. And getting ready to do a little, little what I would, I think, classify as routine maintenance on this thing. We've had it for almost six years now. It's been really good, no major issues with it. Um, and we've probably averaged using it 75 plus nights a year over the years. So we've used it, I would say, a fair bit more than your average people who own an RV. And it's been very good. I've had a few little things here and there that I've had to fix. A couple of things I've upgraded, nothing major. But what we're going to try to do today is replace the awning. Because the awning has just gotten worn out, cracked, getting torn up, looks cruddy. Uh, and it's just, it's failed. It hasn't completely failed, but it's, it's, it's getting ready to tear. And I'd rather avoid that and have an awning that no longer leaks. So, that's what we're going to do. And I classify that as routine maintenance because, again, these things have parts that wear out, and this is part of it. Now, to make this a little extra difficult today, I am doing this myself, and it is uh, rather windy. So I'll apologize if there's wind noise all you know, up front. So this ought to be entertaining. First thing we're going to do is put the awning out. The little awning here on the, on the slide out is fine. We, hardly, we don't use that anywhere near as much as the big one, so it's okay. Now what we've got, all right. well, of course this time it's going to work. <laughs> oh, there it goes. That clunk, which I'll explain in a minute, is a result of what I believe is these shock absorbers having worn out. They're not pushing the thing away from the coach as consistently as they used to. So that little vertical piece tends to get, the, uh, the vertical outside cover tends to get stuck in kind of, a, kind of a halfway position here and then it goes bonk. And I believe that's what that noise is. So I think uh, after this I'm going to look into getting some new shocks for it as well. They're not leaking or blown, but I think they're, uh, I think they're worn out. So, this is a Dometic cover. Uh, it's probably going to be hard to see that. Let's see if we can get closer to it. Now, there's all the information on it. You can see it's a 917NS16. And that 16, I believe, is the width. I measured it. It's 16 foot wide. You can see it's got a 815 date on it. We bought this in June of 16. So, the way you measure these things is not the width of the awning itself, it's actually the width from the center of this arm to the center of the other arm. Because the awning, as you can see, is narrower than this. The other option we have is we have the metal protective cover up there, and I found on the site where I ordered the replacement from, since of course Dometic doesn't have it, uh, is there are different awning covers depending, I guess, on the size. This one has, as you can see, one two, three, four, five slats. And there was a choice between five and six slats. So you can basically uh, check that. So what that amounts to is you've got two more of those little tubes, plastic tubes that hold this whole thing in that you have to deal with on the awning cover. Otherwise you won't have an awning cover anymore. And as you can see, it's getting kind of cracked. We got a few little poke holes here and there and you know, some some other damage and little things like that. It's been good. It's been no real problem. I've cleaned it a few times. It's been good, but it's finally getting to the point where you, know, you can see some, probably see some light coming through there at that seam, maybe. Uh, it's just getting worn out. So we're going to attempt to figure out how to do this with this new one. Now, what I'm going to try to figure out is if it can come off with the metal piece intact and maybe can install that on the ground or how this is going to have to work because what you're going to end up doing and hold this hold a second while i get a ladder i'll probably get up on top of here with a blower and clean that off but what you've got is you've got these plastic tubes that are in here on each side of this thing i think maybe only on one side Oh no, that's popping out. See, that's actually come out of its out of its cover. But what we're going to have to do is take these screws out 
Yeah, okay, that just disconnects. And figure out how it comes loose from that end. I may have to roll it in a little bit. And then pull that cap off. You know, I gotta determine which direction it goes. If it actually goes in the other direction, I'm gonna have to pull forward a bit because I'm too close to the foam pole. But so what we'll have to do is determine how this thing slides out. And it does look like this thing can go on on the ground, which will be handy. But then you end up having to slide both ends in at the same time. Which, it may be easier then to get the awning up here and then slide this on while it's stretched out like this. That may be what we end up doing. So I'm going to figure that out. It looks like it can't come down in one piece though, or I don't know, we'll figure it out. But you can see how you've got some set screws in over here. Those would have to come out and then you should be able to slide the awning out one way or the other. So I'm going to go look around and figure out exactly which way this bugger has to come off. All right, so up here on the outer end, you can see we've got actually got two of those little tubes in here holding it to the to the uh, reel. And this is the way it's going to come out. It's going to come out forward. The uh, end caps that are blocking that are all riveted. Yay. So I'm going to have to get have to drill those out. Uh, but what I don't see is how this cap can be removed even after the rivets are out. As much as I don't want to, kind of looks like I may have to pull the ends of this thing off. Which we have a plug here for the motor, so that's good. Kind of looks like I may have to disconnect the ends of this and drop it down in order to get this to be able to clear. Because we've got some screws holding it in, but if I disconnect this end, there's going to be nothing supporting it. It's just going to be flailing in the air. This is a little, looks like 3 8 or 7 16 screw. Shouldn't be a problem. These are a couple of Allen heads, stainless. They look okay. Uh, but in order to get this cap off, you have to get this out, is what it looks like to me. So, I'm going to go and get ready to figure out how to do that. And then we are going to start making a mess. Now, the easiest way to probably do this is to cut this off and then take it down piece by piece. Which I may yet do, once I try to do a little bit more looking at it. Uh, and then uh, could take this down without having it connected up here, but we will see. We will see. All right, so I just checked the dimensions and checked all of the lines. We've got our two here for the roll, our two here for the five slat cover, and our one main one for the coach side. So it does appear to be correct. It is the right, right width. This is the orientation that's going to go on. Yeah, I know it's on the ground, but what are you going to do? I don't have a table this big. And it's a little lighter than the one that's on there, but I think it's going to match the coach well. So, I think I'm just going to go bollocks out and cut this whole thing off with a, see if my gut hook, gut hook works. And we'll see what we can come up with. All right, here we go. Making a mess. Okay, <laughs> that worked. So, that's probably not the first step that normally would be done, but there you go. Now we're going to go see what we have to do. I think getting the top out is going to be fairly easy. And uh, then we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do with the roll on the bottom. So, there we go.
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, uh, that wasn't terribly tight, is pop these ends off. Got it unplugged already. See how big a mess I can make. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> That's spring loaded. <laughs> Oops. All right. Oh, nuts. Okay. Okay, this is going badly. <laughs> this is going badly. Back in a minute. Okay, don't do that. That's most likely not the next step. I didn't realize that was spring-loaded. Guess I should have. That's what I get. Okay. All right. That may uh, not come out that way. So we're going to endeavor uh, to figure out what the right way to do that is. Because that's, that will absolutely work, but uh, I don't think that's what you want to do, because that is going to unwind that spring. Now, I guess I could just count how many revolutions it unwound and then wind it back up before I put it back together. Uh, but then you still have to deal with getting it wound up when you put these in. So I'm going to go do like I should have done in the first place and try to find the instructions. All right, we're going to try to do this again. I just use the electric drive to wind in the motor a bit. Dang it. I already need two hands. To disconnect that and unwind the torsion. It's still a little torsiony. We'll finish unloading that because we can spool it back up at the end. There we go. That's one. It's basically when you reel it back in, the torsion relaxes and it, it torsions when you, or it tensions when you stretch it back out. So, which kind of makes sense. It's going to be interesting. See how we're going to do this. I'm probably not doing it right. I found the instructions. I don't like them. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to mess this up myself. There it goes. All right, set you down. Then set you down. Okay, now we're done. Yeah, there's the motor. So now it appears that I can get this off and get the other one ready to go on. The fun part's going to be, what'll be interesting, is putting it all back together by myself. So, all right. Looks like couple of allen bolts I can get that off and I'm gonna have to drill these rivets they show some of these things with notches in them already for removing the fabric um, here but I don't see that on this one at all and so either that end has to come off or I gotta drill a hole drill, cut a slot in here and drill a hole which I don't really want to do because then the fabric's going to go over this and it's not going to fit right. So that end has to come off. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is get in here. We're going to cut the rest of this off. There's a square drive at the top that is drilled into the, the uh, retaining uh, spot on the where it attaches to the coach body. I'm going to pull that and then remove that cover 
and the rest of the awning from the slide or from the uh, from the bracket. All right, so let's see. That's that. It's just a self tapper, and there is actually one at the other end as well which I'm gonna go pop out, and then we're gonna try to pull this thing out. This, this thing's gonna be in the way, of course, and uh, we'll most likely have to reseal this anyway because it looks like it's getting a little, little chewed up up here. Oh yeah, we got some cracks. We're gonna have to come in and seal that baby up just because it's been a little while. But otherwise, everything's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go get the other end, then we're gonna see what we can do over here. All right, I'm just pulling on it, and it's just sliding along out of its track like it should. Seems like it's doing okay. So we're going to continue doing that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this ladder over to maybe about here so that it'll give it some support so it doesn't droop over and kink when I uh, pull that thing out the rest of the way. I will probably put the shield back on last after I get everything working with just the awning because that shield is a bit heavier than I expected. That's uh, that's not light. So we're going to just keep trying to pull it out and see what happens. All right, well, that part wasn't too terrible. So that's how it's got to go back in. But uh, that's probably 25 pounds or 30 pounds. So definitely a two-person job, I would say, unless you're an idiot like me. So now, as I've been saying I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get up there on the roof with my blower, blow that crap off, just give it a good inspection, see what it looks like, and then we're going to tackle this stupid part. But I think I know how I'm going to do this. I think I know how I'm going to do this. What I think I'm going to do is get the awning put in all the way at the top, all the way across at the top by itself. Then, once I get this undone and this out, we'll slide this in all the way from that end by itself. And then what we're going to do, as the wind blows my new awning away, is roll it up by hand, fold these in, and mount it to the top right next to where it's supposed to be. You add a little bit of tension to it and mount it to the top, and have it up top, set this back on it. Then we should be able to roll it all the way out and then have something to work with. That's my plan. Whether it works or not, you'll see what I do. All right, I'm going to attempt to get this done by myself. I'm thinking I may need to call some assistance. All right, it started, but the trouble I'm having a little bit is the slide needs to go down this track, which is also containing 
the uh, little cheesy LED lights here. So, I don't see an easy way to pull that out, but that's going to make that a little tricky to be on both sides of this at once. So I think I am going to have to go endeavor myself of some assistance. But it is going in, looks good. It's thicker than the original one, so it's a little, going to be a little tough. If it didn't have these lights, it would slide right in, no problem. But because this fabric, especially this folded edge, is thicker, it's going to struggle getting through that until it's a fair ways in. So, that's what we're going to beat on next. All right, well, that is, that is not going to work with the lights that we had. Because they were broken a little bit underneath, and that whole thing, this fits inside of the slot that's on the camper. And then that whole thing has to fit through this, but with the fabric and the fact that the light bracket was broken, so it just wouldn't go in. So the lights have been removed, did a little snippy snip up there, took the covers off so I could see if there was a plug, there wasn't. I'm going to tie those up and anchor them up there in case I want to put another set back on at some point. We didn't really like the lights all that much because they were bright white and would attract every bug within 47 miles. So I don't think we're going to miss them too much. And if we do, I can put a multicolored set on there with some some adhesive tape up underneath that lip like most of the kits come from and I think that would be fine. So we're going to try this again and see what we can do. And I think it may work better this time. All right, well, we're good down to that last little piece, but it's starting to twist a little bit because of that stupid drain and the fact that the uh, awning is now hanging over here. So I'm gonna have to go get some help to straighten that out and get it in. But otherwise, she's getting close, looking good. I think that's in pretty good shape. Not bad, we're getting there. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how that's gone so far. Everything looks pretty good. It's tucked in where it's supposed to be. Yeah, the lights aren't there, but eh, I'm not going to miss them too much. Like I said, they were bright white, and you could never use them unless there were no bugs out. And down here in Louisiana, there's always bugs out. So, But one thing I did find out is uh, my supposition about the condition of these was incorrect. They are radically strong to the point where uh, I can barely fall down on it. So in order to do the next part, I need to be able to fold this back up into its normal landing position. So I gotta pull those. And so it looks like it's just a couple of pins with little spidery clips on them. Those will probably never work again and I'll have to put a bolt in it, but uh, that's what we're gonna do now. We're just going to pry those little caps off, pull this out. I'm gonna put it back in and leave this arm here because I need it to be folded up the way it's supposed to be. And then, once these are out, I can fold this back, even maybe tape it in place, so that when I roll this thing up, it'll fit back on top where it's supposed to be, and then I can tension it and torque it down and bolt it back together. That's my plan. So, we're gonna do that right now. Let's see how far I can shoot this across the yard. There it goes. Let's see if we can grab it and keep from shooting it All right, across said yard. Okay, now that should just, yep, pull out. Oop, there goes the spacers. I have to go find those. But that pulls out just like that. And then you do the same thing down here, try to not to drop the spacers again, put that back in, and then you should be able to fold it up. Found them. All right, so that is out, and looks pretty good. We're going to see how this is going to work. Got it all closed up. It's not fully pushed in because I want a little bit of wiggle room up there, but I don't want this whole thing falling apart on me. So I just taped it a little bit so the wind won't blow it back on me. 
So we're gonna go pull the other one. It's not uh, the easiest thing in the world to do. I haven't decided which I like pulling first, the top one or the bottom. Uh, they're both kind of a, a pain. Um, but you gotta get it done, and then you should be able to fold those up. So. All right. Now we got all of them taken out, the arms folded up. And now we're gonna concentrate on this mess. See what we need to do to drill out the rivets over here and get it set up so I can slide it on the bottom from there. That's coming up next. Okay. First thing I'm gonna try to do is pop this end off. See these Allen wrenches, or these Allen bolts. Button head cap screws. There they are, and they are 5.30 seconds, which is kind of nice. Not terribly snug, but loctited by the feel. Or at least gooed in, anyway. Kind of the same thing there. Got some gummy stuff holding it in. There she goes. One of these days I'm going to put some screws in my neighbor's tin roof. It's only been doing that for 10 years. Spider. And it feels like that rivet is holding that in, which is just fantabulous. See if there's a spot to get it around. It does not seem to be. It's hard to see in there. Give me a minute, we'll figure this out. My guess is that is a safety in case the bolts fall out so it doesn't ever fly off. So we're going to rid ourselves of that. Of course, sharper drill bits would probably help. I'm going to go get a little chisel and knock that out of there. Yep, that's exactly what that was. Catches on this lip in here and prevents you from having it fly apart if these two screws come out. So, there. Ay -ay -ay. Now it looks like I gotta punch this out. Then I can take a C an E-clip off. Then maybe we can drill these out and that can come off. Good Lord. What a faff. But maybe it'd be easier to spend 1200 bucks instead of, or 1500 bucks instead of 500. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go get a punch. I'm gonna try to knock this pin out, and then we're gonna try to get these off. This E-clip off in here, and that should allow this cap to come off once you drill out these rivets. Then maybe we can get this done. Jeez. Okay, so now I'm gonna give this, I guess, a little tappy tap tap. Wow, I'm living right. All right, well, that's good. That's a little bit of a split pin. Cool. All right, so. I'm gonna go get a pen and mark that because this, these holes basically line up with the holes where the fabric goes in. So I'm gonna go get a pen and mark that. All right, now that E-clip can come off, maybe. At least, at least everything's free floating. It hasn't rusted up completely from being outside for six years. Not really the right way to do it. 
hat. Let's do this instead. There it goes. Spring, shoot it across the yard. Now we got a little washer of some sort in here, which we'll try not to break because it seems to be a bushing. There it goes. And now, finally, I can drill out these rivets. Good night. Ay, ay, ay. Absolutely crazy. Those are probably 3 sixteenths. I don't know how good this 3 sixteenths bit is, but we're going to try it. The other little one was an eighth. It's better than my eighth inch was, so that's nice. All right, before I remove that, I'm gonna put a couple of marks on it. Tell me where it went. And now, whew, we can finally, that's actually, this is actually how you have to get in there to change the motor too. So holy smoke. But we can finally see the slots where you can pull this stinking fabric out of. All of that. Wow. I'm glad it's lasted six years because if this was something you had to do on a, every couple of months, it's not that much fun. Okay. So. I'm going to finish punching these rivet heads out. Got one of them that already came out. And uh, see if I have some 3 16 rivets. And then I'm going to try to, yeah, because that's the motor. It sure is. It sure is. I don't know why they do that. There's someone tucked in every one of these. But, uh, then we're going to start taking that baby apart. Looks like I might be able to lube this a little bit. That's probably not helping. It's kind of kind of rusty. We'll lube that up a little bit when we're done. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go get up. I'm going to punch these rivet heads out. Got my marks on everything. And then we're going to uh, try to slide this thing out of the fabric. All right, so it is moving. Because of my two marks here and here, I know that these are the slots that it has to go back in on the new one. So, yay! All right, great googly moogly. This is this is something. But we're about halfway done now, I think. So I'm going to collect all this garbage that I've spread all over my driveway, and then cart this over there. See if I can get it to go on. Should be a little easier than the top because I'll be working at ground level. I don't think it'll be too bad, uh, but we will see. All right, so here goes nothing. Oh, I just remembered something. There's a special tool they use to go over this lip so you don't cut your awning and scuff it up. I don't have that, of course. So, I'm gonna tape this thing up real good in here around this edge, just to make like a little ramp, and in this area here, so that it doesn't cut the awning. 
All right, all right, we got that taped up good. Let's see if we can get her to go in. Now this is gonna take some persuadification just like that top one did. Because it's thicker than the original. Got to do that same little bit of persuasion over there on the far end to get those folded sewn ends tucked in. As you can see, that uh, is a fair bit easier than the top. Everything is looking good, right in its hole. So we're going to get these ends tucked in here and then start working on putting this mess back together. All right, so to get the first piece back on, got this cap, motor's in place, and it lined up with my marks. By random chance, I have 3 16 rivets in my collection. So, put those babies in. Excellent. Now I'm going to go get a little spray lube. Spray it in there. Put the bushing back on. Put the E-clip back on. Put the pin back, pin thing back in. And then we can bolt the cover back on. Go get the lube. I'll be right back. This baby marks line up. She goes on about like that. Tappy tap tap. And now, finally, uh, come on, put this back on, it's two gummy screws.
Now I'm going to go get a little eighth inch rivet to stick in there just to put the safety back. And this thing's ready to try to roll up and see what we can end up with. There we go. Perfect. Almost as good as new, I'd say. Except now we have the new fabric hung. And for real this time, I'm going to try to, I'm going to go get some help because this is going to take two people, I think. Maybe. We'll see. Yep. There. Okay. Let's see if we can roll this pile of crap up and get it tucked into its home. And if these start coming off, once we get it up there, we'll just try to bring it down easily and then we'll get the bolts in it. Stand for yeah, she rolls up. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, it rolls up that way. That's actually going to work perfect. Okay. Has it been let out? Well, it should, but now I'm going to pick the camera up and show what we're going to do next. I'm, that's very good. I'm glad it tensioned itself. That's excellent. So, okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to try to let this thing out and guide it, and then we're going to have to pop the arms apart and put the uh, pistons back in. So that's what we're going to try to do now. Let's see what it does. What you may want to do is just kind of grab that and just don't really you know we're not gonna I don't think have to yank on it but just kind of give it some guidance because normally there's a big air spring in there that pulls it out and that's not in there right now okay all right now that's yeah see we're gonna have to uh, pull them out. well yeah it's gonna have to come up like this okay. and then but we're gonna there's an air spring that goes in between this pivot point and that pivot point okay so basically it goes in here and here and I showed how it came off earlier there where the holes are yeah well the where this hole is uh -huh. and then it goes in the middle here okay so that's what we're gonna figure out how to put back this should be good enough for now mm -hmm. and then uh, I think what we'll do is we'll get them both mounted at the top then we may have to this. pull this out and hold it so we can yeah somehow because it's not necessarily going to be that way but if it's out like this mm -hmm. it should be pretty much all the way sprung and we should be able to have some tension Ooh, careful losing my pin I didn't put the clip back on it but uh, okay cool so we're gonna do that and then we'll be back all right so we've got one piston back on it's all the way rolled out basically you had to roll it all the way out and help it and then to get enough room to put this in, you end up having to pull this all the way out while you put that pin back. But one thing I realized is all the little spacers are split. So if this works like I think it will, if I had smaller fingers, uh, timber. Anyway, these can be slipped up and over that. Let's see if you can get that baby in there yep and then this little one goes on the other side perfect and these one on each side of the pin in the middle 
These should be able to go in from the top, I think. Well, I'm not working out of a grip. On a ladder? Yeah. All right. Un momento. Oh, I think I got it. Got it? No. See one trying to get away. <laughs> yeah, let me get you a ladder if you get that, get that out of there. That's just coming from the bottom of the boat to the back. Is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just right there. And there you go. Perfect. So this side is done. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and I'll show you what I meant by pulling it out. And that is, you're going to have to basically do that, and then you'll have enough room to get that in. She's pretty heavy, so we'll be back in a few. Okay, we got those on, looking good. Holding itself out, very nice. See what happens, first, first roll. And I think we're gonna have to give it a little more spring. Yeah, definitely. Woo! Yep. So what I'm going to do, we're going to we're going to pull down that end. I'm going to wind that thing up, and then uh, try to see what we can do. Or we may end up having to do both ends. Probably going to be better on this end because this is actually the spring end over here. So we'll figure something out. But we're going to pre-tension this thing a bit more so it rolls up a little easier. Okay, I just went. Popped that end off and went two more wraps around with it to tighten it. It's tight. I don't recommend doing it that way, but we added some more tension. We'll see how it does. We may have to add some more, which I'm not looking forward to because that thing is tight. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go a couple more wraps. But... Made it in. This isn't quite lined up. We'll work on that as we go. I still got to put the screws in at the top. That one's nice and solid. Yeah, not too bad. So it should be less tension on it up there. So I think what I'm going to do is the same thing we just did, but I'm going to do it there because it just loosened itself going all the way up there. So I should be able to not break my wrist and throw this whole thing across the yard. So that's what we're going to try next. I'm going to go up top here, pop that off, spin it a couple of more times and see what we end up with. The key with this thing is you got to be able to hold this vertical piece because it'll once you get that out, It'll shoot out at you because this, the uh, cylinder's under pressure. So I added two more wraps to it. We're going to see what we got. It's just been doing that. That's normal. So it's back to normal as far as that goes. All right, that was pretty nice. Looks pretty good. Let's see what she does on the way in. I think that was acceptable. I think I'm happy with that. So, it's not too bad. It's thicker again, so it doesn't pull in all the way like it used to. So right now it's maxed out, it's up against the coach. So, but it's, it's good and firm. So now what we're gonna do is figure out what to do with that pile of crap to get that on top. So I'm gonna put it back out again, and then we'll see 
what we do from there. Yeah, I like it. That looks pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. And then when we're done, I'm going to go up there and we'll put the uh, two square-headed screws in the rail once it's all centered up and ready to go. But uh, yeah, looking pretty good. So once we get that stripped, which what we're going to do here is pull these set screws out of the end, pull this out this way, and then this will slip on that way. So that's the plan. All right, so now we're going to try to get the uh, cover back on, which shouldn't be too bad with the two people. All right, we're going to get this, but uh, note, do this on the ground or before you get it up in the air. This sucks. Whew. Sun's going down. That took a long time. Do not do that. Make sure you do that. Put that cover on this thing on the ground before you hang it. That was miserable. We basically went across this thing one inch at a time the entire distance. But it went, it didn't tear, it's straight. Got the set screws in, I put the square head screws back in the top, it's about centered. I may at some point crank this another turn to tension it up, but we're gonna try to pull it in for the first time with the cover on it. What are you doing? And see what we get. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. In. The main thing is this fabric is so much thicker than the original. It just did not like going through the channels on that protective cover. It was a fight all 15 feet of it. It's a little cockeyed, but I'm not too worried about it at this point. I may have to put some more spring tension in it on that end. This end looks really good. It's a little loose on the other end, but uh, good enough for now because it's getting late and that was ridiculous. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably put a little more spring tension on this end, but we're not doing that tonight. This thing's going back to bed. Anyway, yep, yeah, exactly. Until next time, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. I've probably got another video coming up on the hot rod. Got to put the fan in for the transmission cooler and then we're going to go from there. So hope you're all having a good day. You got any questions, throw them in the comments. Talk to y'all later. Take care.